In week two of the 2021 season, the Oregon Ducks traveled to Columbus to take on the number three Ohio State Buckeyes. The Ducks entered the game ranked 12th in the country themselves, but given Ohio State's recent success under head coach Ryan Day, the Pac-12's national profile, and the fact that the game was in Columbus, the Buckeyes were favored to win by two touchdowns. Apparently everybody forgot to tell that to Oregon though, because the Ducks ran all over the Buckeyes in this game, looking especially impressive on the ground where they racked up 269 yards on their way to a 35-28 win and a place very firmly in the playoff hunt. In this video, we'll see how they did it. To get into this, let's start by looking at the basic schematic matchup between these two teams. To start with the offense, Oregon is a big-time RPO or run-pass option team, and this means that a lot of their run game will actually have quick passes or screens built in as safety valves for the quarterback to throw if the defense loads up to stop the run. On this play, we'll see one type of RPO that they run, and we'll see what Ohio State's basic strategy was for defending them. On this particular play, there are going to be four different places that the quarterback can go with the ball. The core of the play is a zone read to the right, and two of the quarterback's options will come from this, with the option to either hand the ball off to the running back on his own run to the right, or the option to keep it for himself around the backside edge. Meanwhile, to protect that run option and keep the defense from loading up to stop it, the Ducks are also going to have two pass options built into this play. At the bottom of the screen, their tight end is just going to run outside into the flat. At the top of the screen, they have a trip surface, and the number two receiver in the middle of that trips is going to run a quick screen while the other two receivers block for him. With these two pass options built onto this play, this RPO is built to stretch the defense from sideline to sideline, forcing them to choose between defending the pass options on the outside or the run option in the middle. For Ohio State defensive coordinator Kerry Combs, the strategy in this game was pretty clear. The Buckeyes interior defensive line looked especially strong in this game, and it looked like Ohio State wanted to be sure to take away the pass options on the outside, forcing the Ducks to run into that interior strength. From a personnel standpoint, this meant that the Buckeyes spent most of the game in a 4-2 nickel package, playing with the fifth defensive back that they called their bullet safety. On this play, he's the guy lined up over the tight end, and he's one of those hybrid safety linebacker types that's become so popular for college defenses as they go up against the spread. Structurally, the Buckeyes spent most of the game in single high coverages, so here we see that they've got this free safety playing in the deep middle of the field, while their cover safety rolls down to defend one of the trips receivers. When that safety rolls down to trips like this, it gives the Buckeyes three defensive backs to cover three receivers, and so they're able to take away the screen to this side without having to pull any of their linebackers out of the box, letting them leave both of those guys in the box to stay stout against the run. In very broad strokes, that was the basic matchup between Oregon's offense and Ohio State's defense. It all came down to Oregon's RPO rushing attack versus the Buckeyes' single high 4-2 defense. And now that we understand the basics of this, we can focus on Oregon's plan to defeat that defensive structure. As we'll see, lots of it came down to finding ways to control Ohio State's four weak side defenders. So what do I mean by that? Well, in a formation like this, the strong side of the formation will generally be the side with the most receiving threats. So in this case, that'll be the trip side. The weak side, then, is the side away from the trips, where the Ducks have just that single tight end in this case. When we look to that side, we see that Ohio State's single high structure gives the Buckeyes four defenders. So they've got half of their 4-2 front defenders to the center's right, so that's this defensive tackle, defensive end, and linebacker. And then they've got one defensive back, in this case that's a cornerback who's lined up over the tight end. This is the side that the Ducks spent most of the game attacking. To get into this, let's look a little more at the original RPO, which actually didn't work very well on this play. As we've seen, Ohio State's single high defense will do a great job of taking away the screen up here to the trips receivers, forcing everything back inside into the core of the formation. So how are the Ducks going to deal with those four weak side defenders in the box here? This is where that combination of the zone read and the tight end flat pass comes in. Here's the basic idea. In the box, the Ducks are going to use their left tackle and left guard to combo block, double teaming from the defensive tackle up to the linebacker. This is a straight up two on two matchup, and if the running back ends up attacking at this point in the front, then they just have to be able to win those blocks. But what about the other two defenders? This is where the zone read and the RPO come in, with the defensive end being controlled by the quarterback's read. After the snap, as the running back approaches the mesh point, the quarterback's looking straight at that guy. In this case, that defender's staying wide, keeping his shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage, and staying ready to break back to the outside in case the quarterback keeps it. When that guy sits wide like this, though, he can't chase the running back down to the inside, and so the quarterback's read has effectively blocked him or taken him out of the play. He hands the ball off to the running back, and the defensive end isn't able to be a factor in running it down from behind. We can imagine, though, that if that guy would have crashed down to chase the run, then the quarterback could have pulled the ball and kept it for himself around the edge. At that point, the only defender who would have been able to get to him would be that bullet safety on the edge, so how does the offense control him? This is the guy that the tight end flat route's designed to control. If the bullet stays wide to defend that route, then he can't run down the quarterback. 
If he leads the tight end to attack the quarterback keeper, though, then the quarterback can sling it out to the tight end for a nice game down the sidelines. No matter how the defense responds to this play, then, the Ducks have a plan to control all four of their weak side defenders with this RPO. Now, although the Ducks can account for everybody to this side on this play, this strategy is going to fail, and that defensive end that the quarterback's reading plays an important part here. As we've seen, when that guy sits wide, it forces the quarterback to hand the ball off to the running back. As we know, though, Ohio State's defensive tackles had a good game, and so as the running back attacks the middle of the formation, those guys are both able to shed their blockers and fall inside to make first contact behind the line of scrimmage. The strategic problem with this play, then, is that it allows that defensive end to force the ball inside to the heart of the Buckeye defense. This is the kind of thing that Oregon needed to stop, and on this play, they're just going to do it by blocking that defensive end, using their tight end to seal him down to the inside. With that defensive end sealed to the inside like this, the quarterback's free to take it around the edge, so problem solved. Of course, most of the time when you solve one problem, you're really just creating another one, and that's definitely the case here. On the previous play, remember that the Ducks were using their tight ends to control that bullet safety lined up over him. He did that by running out to the flat and forcing that guy to widen with him. When the tight end blocks, however, he can't occupy that defensive back, so the Ducks need to find some other way to control that guy. On this play, they'll use their running back to accomplish this. After the snap, instead of running zone to the right like he did on the last play, he's going to release out to the left as a lead blocker, working up to that bullet safety and preventing him from falling inside to tackle the quarterback. When the bullet widens to take him away, the Buckeyes are left without a defender for the quarterback, who keeps the ball for himself and cuts it up inside for a nice 13-yard gain. Now that we understand what Oregon's goal was, all that we need to do is sit back and enjoy all the different ways that they had to keep Ohio State's defense from locking on to it. This is the Ducks' first touchdown of the game, and here there are a few things to comment on. First, the blocking scheme is a little bit different, so on this play, the left tackle and left guard are going to combo block from the defensive tackle up to the linebacker on the opposite side of the formation. They're trying to seal him off back there. Then, this is going to be another one of those plays where they use a quarterback read to take out the weak side defensive end, just like we saw in the first RPO. On that play, we saw that the defensive end was the quarterback defender, and this new play is going to be great for messing with that assignment. After the snap, we see the quarterback again reading that guy as the running back approaches the mesh point, and we can see the defensive end executing that same technique as before, shuffling, keeping his shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage, and keying the quarterback. The problem here is that on this play, the quarterback is not the guy attacking the edge. On this play, the quarterback's actually the inside run threat, and the running back is the guy who's attacking to the outside. This means that when the defensive end sits inside with the quarterback, the running back's easily able to outflank him and get to the sideline. So that accounts for the defensive tackle and the defensive end, but what about the remaining two weak side defenders? The answer is that this flex tight end is actually going to end up blocking both of them, and Ohio State's coverage will be a major reason for that. On this play, the Buckeyes are playing a man coverage, and so this bullet safety has to cover that tight end no matter where he goes. The problem here for the defense is that that tight end is cracking back to block the weak side linebacker on this play, and this lets him get two for one on the block. Not only does he prevent that linebacker from getting to the edge with the running back, but when he releases down inside to block him, the bullet safety has to run with him in man, taking him out of the play and opening up the edge for the running back. So if man coverage creates problems like this, couldn't Ohio State just switch to play his own coverage instead? They certainly could, and in fact they did at times in this game, but this was where Oregon was able to bust out their restrained yet efficient passing game. Within this defensive structure that we've been looking at, the defensive end and defensive tackle obviously won't factor into pass coverage, and so that leaves just this defensive back and linebacker, and Oregon's going to occupy them with the tight end and running back to the weak side. After the snap, the tight end's going to run deep down the sidelines, pulling the defensive back deep, and the running back is then going to release out into the flat, pulling the linebacker out wide. Finally, they're going to bring the number three receiver from the trip side across the formation on a shallow cross, running him right into the space that's just been vacated by the other two receivers. The quarterback hits him as he enters that zone void, and he's able to get outside for a nice gain down the sidelines. This weak side attack then wasn't just something that we saw in the run game, it was equally effective in the passing game, especially when Ohio State tried to play zone to solve some of their problems against the run. All right, that's it for this video. I'll be doing breakdowns like this throughout the season, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to get notified whenever a new breakdown posts, and I'll see you here next time.